Hello everyone, how have you been? I believe that you have been, you have been doing well. So the continuing from the last time, also I'm very happy to you know, the share this message with all of you. I really hope that you know, the, you, through this message that you learn how to believe in the gospel of Christ so that we can, you can get the eternal life. You see, the many people, they say, they, say they, believe, they believe in Jesus, but they still live with the condemnation and the fear. Why? Because they do not know the gospel of Christ exactly. The Satan, he created this the different gospel, which is totally different from the gospel of Christ. That's why, even though you know, the people believe in Jesus, they still remain in the position of sinner. That's why you know, the many people, they still live with the chaos and the fear and the confusion in their lives. But I believe that through this you know, the lecture, you will know, be able to understand and discover your true position. Last time, you know, the, I you know, spoke to you about the difference between the, the, between the eyes of God and the eyes of you know, the human being about sin. We human beings, we considered about sin you know, the, with like, the evil thoughts and evil actions. Why? Because we human beings, we focus on the outward appearance. But God sees the core of our heart. So today, I want to talk about the law. And how, you know, the, what comes in your mind when you hear this word called law? You see, many people, when they listen to this word, this term, the law, automatically, you know, this mind comes to them that, ah, the law is something that we have to keep. You see that even in our society, there is the law. Each country and each, each society, they have the law. That's why, you see, this law of the country is made for the, the citizen in that country. The law of human being, you know, it, was, it is made for human being to keep. That's why, only human being can keep the law of human being. For example, the chickens or those animals or the cows, it is impossible for them to keep the law of human being. If you ask those animals to keep the law of human being, do you think these animals they could keep? No, it is not possible. In the same way, the law given to the human being, you know, that is the law of God. You know, God gave us the law in the time of Moses. Now, first of all, we have to know clearly that law is the law of God. The law of God is different from the law of man. But many people, they just you know, counted that law of God as a law of man, and they try to keep that law of God according to, the, according to the style of the human being. But first of all, that is wrong. So that's why we human beings who are born with this evil heart, we human beings who are born you know, the, with this heart, which in, we inherited from the Adam and Eve, which we inherited from Satan, it is impossible for us to keep the law of God perfectly. I'm sure that most of you have tried your best to keep the law of God perfectly. Maybe you can say that you, know, you may keep the law, but you cannot say that you have kept the law completely. Many people, even without knowing about the law clearly, they just you know, try their best to keep the law. You see, even they do not know how many laws are in the Bible. In the, you know, the Middle Age, this you know, the Bible scholar called you know, Maimonides, he counted all the laws in the Bible. And you know, he found 613 laws in the Bible. You see that? How can we human beings keep the law of God even without knowing what kind of laws in the Bible? Many people just think that you know, the laws are the Ten Commandments, and they think that they, uh, it is okay for us to keep the Ten Commandments. But actually, you know, in the Bible, there are 613 laws. And it is impossible for us to keep the law of God perfectly, because we are human beings. God is the only one who can keep the law. Even in the time when Moses, you know, he brought this law to the, you know, the Israel, that day, at that time, that day, 3,000 people were killed. Why? Because they already broke the law. 
We human beings who was born in sin, who was born as a slave of sin, it is impossible for us to keep the law perfectly. But problem is, you know, Satan deceived the people. Because Satan you know, deceived the people in this way. I have you know, explained to you you know, since I started my lecture. Many people, you know, they have this idea that we have to increase good and decrease evil. Because of this understanding, also when they hear about this law, automatically they interpreted this law of God based on this idea. Ah, oh, you have to, you know, you know that we have to do good. So what is good? Yeah, keeping the law is good. And breaking the law is evil. We should not violate the law. We should keep the law because that is good. That's why what we have to do is to keep the law and to decrease evil. We should not break the law. We should do our best to keep the law. This idea actually is originated from this this kind of you know, the understanding that we have to increase good and we have to decrease evil. Because you know, the people interpret the law of God hmm, with this kind of understanding, that's why automatically they are caught by this idea because it, is, it sounds reasonable and understandable that we have to do good, which means we have to keep the law. But we have to check how we are supposed to keep the law. As I told you that in the Bible, there are 613 laws. First of all, you know, many people, they do not know even what kind of laws are in the Bible. Because we are, most of you are not the Jews. Most of you are Gentiles, even including me. That's why huh, we do not know even what kind of laws in the Bible. How can we keep the law that even we do not know? That is not possible. But people do not consider about these things. They just you know, they try to keep according to their standard. This is very wrong. And then, secondly, we need to check how we are supposed to keep the law. How? How is very much important. You should not just focus on that you, know, you keep the law. You have to check how you are supposed to keep the law according to the Bible. It is not important for you to keep the law. Actually, it is very much important for you to keep the law according to the standard of God because this, God, this law is law from God. So let us open to the book of Romans chapter 2. When we read Romans chapter 2 verse 13, Let me in order to read you some verses uh, which explains to us how we are supposed to keep the laws. First of all, Romans chapter 2, verse 13. <clears throat> For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Here the Bible says, not the hearers of the law. Even if you hear the law, that is not enough. Uh, they are not just in the sight of God. But the doers, but doers of the law will be justified. Which means, you, uh, even if you know what kind of laws are in the Bible, that is not enough. If you want to be justified by the law, you have to do it. You have to keep it. And secondly, how? How you are supposed to keep? We can open the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, it is written, For as many as are of the works of the law, uh, works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So here the Bible says, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things. Which means if you do not continue to keep the law. And if you do not keep the law, all the laws, all the time, it means that if you do not keep the law, if you do not keep the 
whole rose and all the time, it means that you are under the curse. I told you that there are 613 rows, right? 613 rows. If you do not keep these 613 rows all the time, what is the meaning of all the time? From the beginning up to the end, from your birth to the death, all the time. If you do not keep the rows in this way, the Bible says you are under the curse. What about you? Have you ever huh, the kept these 613 laws continuously? No. I'm sure that you have already violated the laws more than enough. So according to the Bible, are you under the blessing or are you under the curse? The Bible clearly shows us how we are supposed to keep the law. So, and then, we can also open the book of James. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, the verse 10. Now it is saying, For whoever shall keep the whole law, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Here the Bible says, whoever shall keep the whole law, whoever shall keep the whole law, 613 laws, if you break one out of 613, which means, uh, suppose that you, you have kept the 612 uh, laws completely, but if you break one, people think that, ah, I broke only one, I just, you know, the, the, the violated one, that's why I will just, you know, the, I will just, you know, the, try to solve this one, one law that I broke. But God does not you know, the count in that way. God does not consider in that way. God says, if you stumble one point, you are guilty of all. This is how God considers. This is the law according to the standard of God, not the standard of man. That's why here verse 11 says, For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery but you do, not, you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Even if you do not commit adultery, if you murder, it means that even you become the adulterer. This is what the Bible says. You see that you know, most people, they say that they keep the law. Why? Because they do not huh, do such things outwardly. Like they didn't do these evil actions. I committed adultery. I did not commit adultery because I never slept with another woman. I have kept this word. But even last time I read you this book of Matthew chapter 5, how Jesus said, if you have lost heart in you when you see the lady, you have already committed adultery. Now Jesus explains to us how you know, God considers you uh, about this issue of the breaking the law. That's why, according to this standard of God, who can keep the law perfectly? Is there anyone who can keep the law perfectly? You see, do you remember when I preached about the sin? I told you that human heart is only evil. And God says, no one does good. If I change the subject, no one, to the everyone. Everyone does what? Everyone does sin. This is what Bible says. And then, no one can do good. I want to tell you, the Bible is not contradictory. God does not change his word. God does not cancel his word. Now, God is the one who said that human heart is only evil and everyone does sin, and no one can do good. Do you think God gave you the law to keep, knowing that you are evil 
and you do evil, you do sin, and you cannot do good? If God gave you the law to keep and to be justified by the keeping the law, it means huh, God gives you the closed way. It means that God huh, does not want you to come to heaven. Why? Because it is impossible. How can we, who is evil, keep the law of God? How can we, who, who only do who, who only you know, the, do sin, can keep the law? That is not possible. It does not make sense. That's why in the Bible, book of Romans chapter 3, verse 20, God has concluded about the law. Romans chapter 3, verse 20, here the Bible says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. I told you that God does not lie and God does not change his word. God who says that human heart is only evil continually. God says that you know, everyone does sin. God says that no one can do good. Human being who is like this, they cannot keep the law. That's why here, the Bible clearly says, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. No flesh can be justified, which means no one can go, go to heaven by the keeping the law. No one can be justified by the deeds of the law. Why? Because human, human being is evil. But here, Satan deceived the people. Ah, you have to do good. And you have to decrease evil. You have to increase good. You know, once you keep the law, you know, the way, that is when you can stand before God. That is when you can be accepted by God. Even it is matching with the course of this world, the rule of this world. That's why people also, they, you know, they consider this law of God in that way. Because we are familiar with the law as the law to, to keep. That's why other people, they try their best to keep the law. Even so many preachers, they said, they teach the people, you have to keep the law to be blessed. Yet, God has already concluded that there, uh, no flesh will be justified by the deeds of the law. So, why? So my question is this now. Why did God give us the law? God knows that we human beings, we have no ability to keep the law. God knows that huh, you cannot keep the law and you cannot you know, go to heaven by the keeping the law. Why do you think God gave you the law? The answer is written in the Romans chapter 3, verse 13 that we just read. Here, therefore by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. As I told you, once you stand before God, and once you stand before the law, you cannot help but to realize that you are under the curse. Why? Because you do not, uh, you do not you know, the, the keep the law a whole law and all the time. That's why what is waiting for you is only curse. Now, God clearly shows you your true figure even through the law. So, I can tell you that law is like law is like mirror. When you stand before the mirror and when you look yourself through the mirror, you know that you can realize if there is something dirty on your face. But before you, you know, see yourself through the mirror, you cannot realize. So, like this mirror, also law reflects your heart, the true position of your heart. You see that if you go to the hospital, sometimes you you do this, you know, X-ray. 
You know, this you know, through X-ray, you can you, know, the, you can check what is uh, what is in your body if there is any disease, if there is any problem. You see that low, it is like the X-ray to check uh, how your heart is. That's why even we can check the Romans chapter, the, we can check the Romans chapter the 7, verse 7. Here the scriptures say, what, sh the <coughs> what shall we say then? Is, it, is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I do not have known sin except through the law. For I do not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet. Which means, through the law, we are able to realize that ah, this covetousness uh, is a sin, and how oh, I have covetousness. If law, you know, that never said that you know you shall not covet, even if you are with this covetousness, we would never realize that this is a sin. So law reveals the sin in our heart. Uh, the law, you know, that clearly shows us the true image of the human being the true image of the heart. That is the first purpose of the law, to let us realize our true position, that we are under the curse and we are destined to be destroyed because of sin. We are born as a sinner. We are born as the slave of sin. We are of our father devil. That's why, you know, the first purpose of the law is to let us realize our true image. So, what is the second purpose of the law? God, who, you know, the, let us realize our true figure. It is not that, you know, that God just, you know, want to, you know, the, let us realize our true figure only. And now, you know, the, you, are, uh, you are destined to be destroyed. You are going to be destroyed. You are under the curse. God who teaches us our true figure, it is because God wants to, God wants us to want to hear us. But problem is we do not have the power to heal our heart. Why? Because we are uh, we are not more powerful than the sin. That's why this law has the second, you know, this law has the second, you know, the role. The first role is to let us realize our true figure, our true image, our true position. And the second role is to take us to the one who can uh, solve our sin problem. So we can say the book of Galatians. We can see the book of Galatians chapter 3. Book of Galatians chapter 3 verse <coughs> 24. Here it is written, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. As I told you, God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. That is the will of God. That is the plan of God. God wants to save all of us from our, from our sins, from the domain of Satan. But the problem is, no matter how hard we try, it is impossible for us to keep the law perfectly and it is impossible for us to be justified by the deeds of the law. That's why the, the, with the law, no one can be justified. So what shall we do? There is nothing. There is nothing we can do. That's why God the, the, he, the, the gave the second duty to the law. What is the, that second duty? Law should take us to the Jesus Christ. Here the Bible says, Law was our tutor to bring us to the Christ so that we might be justified by faith. This, you know, the second, you know, the role of the law is very much important. You see, through the mirror, you can find out the dirty things on your face. Through the x-ray, you can find the disease on your body. But here, one thing which is very much important is mirror cannot wash the dirty things on your face. And the x-ray cannot you know, the cure your disease. 
the role of this mirror and the role of this X-ray is to uh, let you realize that there is a something on your, on your face or there is a something like disease on your body. And this X-ray can take you to the doctor. Or this mirror can take you to the washrooms uh, so that you may wash your face with a soap. You see, now this, as this X-ray takes you to the doctor, law after letting you realize your true figure, this law can you know, take you to the Jesus Christ, who is a savior, who has the power to solve your problem of sin perfectly and completely. That is the second, you know, the purpose of the law. So once you exactly realize your true figure, once you exactly realize your true image, you can realize that you are not able to be justified by the law of Moses. And you can realize that, you can only realize that, ah, I need a savior. I need the one who can fix my problem. I really hope that through this time, you can be free from this wrong understanding about the law. Satan you know, planted this kind of idea in the heart of the people that you have to do good. Because the people you know, have this kind of the fixed idea, automatically they interpreted this law of God as the law of a human being, that we have to keep the law, we have to do good. I really hope that our viewers Please, you understand the true meaning of the law and the true purpose of the law. The first is to let you realize your true position and second issue. Second, you know, the purpose is that take you to the Jesus Christ so that you can meet Jesus. Jesus is waiting for you there with the, where you realize your true figure. Jesus said, I came down this world not for the righteous, but for the sinners. One who realized that he is a perfect sinner, who is destined to be destroyed. Once they realize this, their true position, they can only meet Jesus and they can receive the grace of Jesus Christ and true salvation, which can bring the eternal life. I believe that you know, the, the uh, upcoming these lectures, you will be able to hear more details about the, how Jesus Christ will make you perfect righteous. Thank you very much. See you next time.